Hey guys, it's it's John here. I've had a few requests for a rig rundown, so I am uh, gonna show you kind of what I'm running live right now. This particular rig I've been extremely happy with, and over the years as I've swapped things in and out of my rig and, and just kind of seen what works for me, this has actually worked the best. Super dependable, and it's actually super easy to transport compared to bigger rigs I've had in the past. First and foremost, this is kind of the pride and joy of everything. This is my Paul Reed Smith Archon 50 watt. They do make a 100 watt and a 25 watt version of this amp, but this is the 50 watt and it, it's worked great for me and I've been using it for the last five or six years. I don't really run my settings just crazy. Um, I run very, very little gain on this. The volume is actually the gain knob on the different channels. And as you can see, I run very, very little gain on here. Uh, this EVH 5153 is also a 50 watt amp and this is my backup. This amp is very, very good and it has a great clean channel and it gets way, way, way heavier and dirtier than I need it. I sometimes run this as my main. Um, I do like the Archon a little bit better for, for what I'm doing, but this is a great backup. This cab right here is actually a 412 and this is Jed's base cab. Uh, I just put it here so we could have a little bit extra room, but he runs a Powered by Omega 412 cab and I run a Powered by Omega 212 cab. As you can see, they were custom made for us. Shout out to those guys, they make great cabs. I love it, it's uh, it's smaller than a 412 obviously, but um, I actually ran two Mesa Boogie 412s uh, before I, I got this made for me and I sold both of those 412 cabs after I got this because I just, I didn't wanna carry them around and didn't have the, the use for them anymore. But Mesa Boogie does make great stuff, but um, for me, this Powered by Omega, it just, it looked cooler and it was easier to carry. I believe it's a Vintage 30 in the top and a Creamback uh, H75 speaker in the bottom. As far as my pedal board goes, I run a pretty simple setup. Uh, as you know, with both of my amps, I run very, very little gain and I use this Horizon Devices Precision Drive to kind of hit the front of it just a little bit. As you can see, the drive knob is all the way down and it just adds a little bit of grit and attack to the front of the amp and it gives it that extra 5%. I do run a, uh, a Digitech drop pedal in case we ever need to start going lower, running different tunings, I have that um, just in case. I'm running a Polytune 3 tuner. Um, I love this thing. It's, it's small on your board and it does the job and it, it hasn't failed me yet. I'm running a Line 6 Relay G50 wireless system. I've been running this for years now and it's always been super dependable. And I run Ansman rechargeable batteries and they just, it's a good combo. It's very dependable. They work well together. This is all running in front of my amp and this is actually in my effects loop. The, uh, the Boss RV500 is, I, as you can see, I have different different settings for uh, different songs. Yeah, I have each song is programmed in here and I can just turn it on and off here. And then I can hit the effects loop button here live whenever I wanna engage my leads or my clean effects. Uh, this Vibraclone is something that uh, Dave Cow, our producer found for me. Uh, during the song Line to Yourself on the Rapture EP uses a weird kind of rotary type effect in the in the verses and I didn't have anything that could quite duplicate that. He kind of created that effect for me on that song. And I was like, Dave, I need something that'll kind of duplicate that live. And he found this pedal for me and it works really, really well. It's like a tremolo uh, Leslie rotary type of sound. I can't really explain it, but it's really crazy and um, as you can see, I don't really have it just wide open, but it does. It's really cool for leads and cleans. Got the dependable Corona Chorus. Uh, shout out to COVID-19 uh, Coronavirus. I got you right here on my board with the chorus pedal. Um, carbon Copy Analog Delay is a, is a second delay in addition to the RV500, which does have built-in delay. So I run two delays simultaneously. This one's at the end of the chain and this one's toward the front. It kind of, running them together kind of kind of thickens up my cleans and my leads just a little bit and kind of gives it a third dimension almost. Last but not least, I have my EP Booster 
in the effects loop before it comes back to the amp and this thing's all the way down and I just leave it on and it just adds like a one or two decibel boost to my effects loop so my my leads and my cleans kind of pop out just kind of adds a little bit of top end and bottom end it's a very simple pedal it's i think it's like a preamp or something in here uh based on like an old memory man pedal that jimmy page used to use back in the day and I, correct me if i'm wrong on that but it just adds like all of these little things add an extra like one or two percent and it's nothing just makes a huge difference but it's a combination of everything that kind of lets me do what i want to do and um for the two guitars I'm running live, we're playing in drop A sharp right now. Uh, this is a Mike Mashock, Paul Reed Smith baritone with bare knuckle Ragnaroks uh, as the pickups. I started using bare knuckle pickups exclusively uh, about four or five years ago and they were nice enough to put me on their website. So shout out to Bare Knuckle Pickups. They are my favorite pickups I've ever played. This is another Paul Reed Smith baritone this is a 277 and i have blackhawks in here also bare knuckle and my friend clay crenshaw who's my guitar tech uh, down in memphis he's hot rodded both of these and replaced the pots and the capacitor and everything in here it's a pretty simple rig it does look a lot cooler with the big 412 here but that is that's not mine that's jed's almost idiot proof for the for the most part it works well for us and it's not just too much to carry the good thing about running these tube amps is I, I'm, I'm, I love digital amps. I ran a Kemper for a little bit in my studio. I love Axe FX and the Neural DSP and STL Tones plugins in the studio. But as far as the digital stuff goes, uh, if one of those goes down, I've always been told that it, it is quite expensive to fix those. But with the tube amps, if one of these tube amps go down, you can you can take it to a good tech and get it fixed for relatively cheap. Plus, they just sound awesome. You just can't beat the sound out of a good tube amp running hot into a cab with a microphone on it. Yeah, I've got, I don't know if you can see that, I've got my spaces marked here where I plug my mic and I carry an SM57 with me and mount it here and it hits the sweet spot every time. But that's pretty much it. I'm John. This is my rig rundown for Roses Unread as of 2020. And we're not back on the road yet, unfortunately, because we're in the middle of a pandemic. But we're just ready to get back out on the road. And I just kind of want to take a few minutes to show you what I'm running. If you have any questions or comments or, or think something's cool or think I'm doing something wrong, leave us a comment and let me know. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.